Uh, so guys, welcome to my class. This is Disclosures. I see new faces, but I'm very bad with names and faces. Could we just take a second and everyone introduce themselves to me real quick? Starting here. Okay, my name is Akti. Uh, I'm here for two years. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The first time I'm in your class. Oh, well, I'm happy to have you here. Hi, I'm Jennifer. She recently graduated the mentorship program. Yes. Yes. And she's always in our classes. Yay! <laughs> uh, Phoenix, this is my first week, Phoenix Durham. I am primarily a commercial agent, but I am thinking of trying my hand a little bit at residential. Well, welcome. We're happy to share residential with you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Rachel. You've probably seen me before. She's always here. <laughs> I'm Gabby. Hi, Gabby. First time taking your class. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Kimberly, I've taken two of your other classes. Ulana. I think this is my first class. Welcome. This is Maya. I would have took it, but Yeah, you can never, all of these classes, I, the way I stay on top of it and stay very good at my craft and the reason I can teach these classes is starting off in escrow, I got to see like 100 deals to every one an agent had. But the way I stay good is by teaching these classes, your questions, your comments, your stories. They keep me on top of the game. Hi, my name is Goli. I'm the first time in your class. Hi, Goli, welcome. Thank I'm Angelica, and um, I love your class. So. Thank you. Um, do you want a seat with the table so you can write? I have to leave it a little bit early. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with the most important disclosure in the contract. The first few that I have in this big fat package, sorry guys, um, are the most important. After then, it's not really in any particular order. So the most important disclosure that a seller completes that is on a car form is called the Real Estate Transfer Disclosure Statement, and the acronym for that is the TDS. The acronyms you can find at the bottom of any car form, so from this point forward, I'll refer to this document as the TDS, because no one wants to say the whole thing over and over again. <laughs> um, so, a uh, little background, um, your sellers will maybe on occasion ask you for guidance to complete this. I always like to be present for questions with my sellers when we complete these documents. I never send them DocuSign. What I usually do is I send the seller disclosure package over to the seller via email and I schedule a time to either A, go in person to talk to them, or B, go over it on the phone with them. Depending upon how many questions your clients have, it can take anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. All right? So, one of the things they ask me is, can you write this in for me if we're on the phone? You legally cannot write anything on these documents other than fill out the informational portions about address, uh, client name, things like that, okay? So to be very clear, you cannot complete this document. It's against the law, you will lose your license, and you will be liable if there's any discrepancy. All right, so um, let's, uh, yeah, take the whole thing, the whole thing. That's Nagar. <laughs> no, don't, sorry. Um, so we'll start here um, at the top, the portion that's bold, that says this disclosure statement concerns. All right, so the first blank there is asking for the city. Make sure we have a legal city, guys. Hollywood is not a city. Venice is not a city. They are all areas of a legal city, which is Los Angeles. So when in doubt, ask escrow, ask title, check the property description, make sure the correct city name is in there. Same thing with county, which is the next line. And then described as, this is your property address. So this is where the street address is going to go. Um, the next section, well, same part of the section. This statement is a disclosure of the condition of the above described property in compliance with section 1102 of the Civil Code as of. This space is for the date. This date is very important. Why? Because your seller is only liable on this document for disclosing anything they know until this date. If something new arises with the property after this date, if you're not in escrow, you should do a new one or do an addendum to this. If you are in escrow, you will need to make a new disclosure. You can make the disclosure as an attachment to the TDS. Keep in mind, if the buyer has lifted their contingency uh, regarding receiving reports and disclosures from the seller, they will have five additional days once they receive a new disclosure in order to approve or cancel. All right? Sorry, this is the date that she signed the agreement to... No. 
This is the date that the seller filled out this document. Okay. So, right, the seller can only be liable for the contents of this document as of this date, you know, to this date. So on this document, they're disclosing anything that they know of to this date. So the date that the seller signed. After this date, can you add something to this document? No. You need to make an addendum. And if the buyer contingency has been lifted, they're going to get an automatic five-day uh, period in which they get to review the new disclosure and approve or cancel. All right, um, so moving forward, um, this section I, coordination with other disclosure forms. So sometimes the seller might have an inspection report done prior to going to market or prior to opening escrow. This is not usually the case, uh, but it does occur sometimes. So let me give you an example. Let's say I go for a listing appointment in uh, BHPO in the Hills area and it's an older home surrounded by trees and nature and it's an older wooden structure. I can see that there's visible wood damage, most likely termite damage or I see active infestation. You may or may not know how to spot these things, but everyone can tell when something's in disrepair. Or let's say I go to a hillside property and I see a lot of cracks in movement. Um, if I get that listing, one of my piece of it, pieces of advice to the seller may depending on their situation and the condition of the property, be to have a pre-listing inspection to see what's going on because if they have something big going on, they may not be able to sell or it may be advantageous for them to address it and fix it or at least have the report so that any buyers who are making offers are aware of the condition and make the offer and offer price subject to the knowledge of what's going on with the property. That could be a big deal. So if there is an inspection report that was um, received prior to there being a buyer in play, you're going to give that inspection report to the buyer and their agent, uh, most likely prior to the time you even take an offer from them, but definitely uh, within a counter or when you accept. I would do it ahead of time so that you pre-negotiate any price fluctuations based on whatever condition there is. Or, you know, something, it, it could be that the report comes back great and it looks alarming, but it's not. Um, and in that case, the buyer and buyer's agent are probably going to do another report uh, for themselves during your physical inspection contingency. But if you have it, this checkbox that says inspection reports completed pursuant to the contract of sale or receipt for deposit, you would check this here and or the second box and you would list them all here. So the second box, let me give you an example. There's only been... Well, there's been a couple times, but the one time I have a good example from that's recent where I checked this additional inspection report or disclosure box was I had a listing. The seller's wife had been very ill um, and she passed. But before she passed, um, one night in the middle of the night, she went and turned on water in the master bathroom upstairs. Um, and that water continued to flow and it overflowed and it flooded upstairs and it caused a lot of water damage and it did actually cause mold and they had insurance and it was mediated properly um, but I wanted to be ahead of that situation disclose it prior to accepting offers and so what I did was I actually got the seller to um, make a call with me to the insurance company and get a copy of the entire claim and all of the um, receipts and documentation related to the repair people and I put that together as a package and made it an attachment to this TDS so that we didn't have to reinvent the wheel and so that it would be more accurate information than my seller's memory from four years ago. So that's an example of a time I, I checked that box and, and used that method. Yes? If they have such a, a condition situation that you are telling us, can the seller say, I'm not going to call the insurance, I'm not going to cooperate with you and give you the report, so what at this point, what can be? Okay. Well, just so you know, then you're, we're going to have to go off your memory and we're going to have to uh, include that in this document and we might need more space so we'll have to do some addendums. And uh, just be very aware, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, that the buyer is most likely going to ask for supplemental documentation anyhow. So, you know. Um, not to protect us as the agent. What it's not you. you, you're advising your client. You're protecting your client by telling them what would be the best situation for them. If they don't take your advice, that's on them. 
I would put it in an email just to memorialize oh, just it. An email. But you're probably in a better position as an agent or to give it up front because they cannot yeah. ne negotiate it after this. Absolutely. Yeah. I would do everything I could to convince my seller without uh, you know, causing a riff in the relationship to go ahead and try to do it my way. But if they didn't, that's their prerogative. I advise them. All right. Um, moving forward. Here. The next section is seller's info. So we'll read this together. The seller discloses the following information with the knowledge that even though this is not a warranty, prospective buyers may rely on this information in deciding whether and on what terms to purchase the subject property. Seller hereby authorizes any agents representing any principals in this transaction to provide a copy of this statement to any person or entity in connection with any actual or anticipated sale of the property. That last section, anticipated sale of the property, circle that. If you have disclosures before you go to market, which good Lord, I hope you do if you're a good agent, it's gonna help you out. You need to know what's going on with the property before you sell it and then have to uh, backpedal trying to keep an escrow together if there's a problem. Um, this, uh, these four, five words, yeah, these five words here are where it says you have the right as an agent to share this information if you have it with any prospective buyer prior to a deal being offered, okay? And just so you know, this document is required by California state law. You cannot make or close a deal without it, even off market, all right? Okay, moving forward. The following are representations made by the sellers and are not representations of the agents. Remember I told you, do not fill out anything here even if your seller insists that you do. We are not legally allowed to do so. Um, and this section reinforces that. If any, this information is a disclosure and is not intended to be part of any contract between the buyer and seller, right? So this is just information. Um, just because a seller put something on here doesn't mean the buyer has to agree to it. Even if they sign off on it, they're only signing that they've received the information. How do they sign off on it, guys? What would be acceptance of the information contained herein? Contingency removal. Contingency removal on the seller disclosure mm -hmm. contingency, okay? All right. Um, the next section is one of the things that I see that is most commonly missed in all disclosures. The two little boxes, seller is or is not occupying the property. Make sure your seller completes this. If they don't and you have an agent like me repping the buyer and I need more time, I'm gonna wait until my buyer runs out of time on something and then I'm gonna come back to you and say, hey, finish the TDS and I'll get you the contingency removal in five days because I now automatically have five more days. Thank you. Nicer than that, of course. Um, but uh, just make sure that gets completed, okay? Um, so moving on to the section below that, all of these check boxes are for equipment that would be contained within the property that you're selling. Um, some of these uh, are easy for a seller to misinterpret. So I like walk, that's why I like being there with the seller when they complete it or being on the phone. And I literally go through each item, right? Uh, and if they are giving a response that I feel like is inaccurate, I'll say, I'll ask them a question. I'm not going to tell them what to write, but I will say, oh, hey, well, don't you have an exhaust fan in that range above your stove? Um, so we'll need to, you know, add that in there. Um, there are a few of these check boxes here that have sections for further um, info. So um, let's see, like the second column at the bottom, garage, or not the bottom, I guess, like close to the middle, garage. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So if you select, yeah, there's a garage, you have to say if, if it's attached, not attached, carport. And then if there's an automatic garage door opener, you'll need to check that. And then also the number of remote controls. Why? The number of remote controls that they have need to be delivered to the buyer at close of escrow. All right? So make sure this stuff is accurate. You're also going to learn more about the property. Remember I told you get these before you list? You're gonna learn so much about your seller's property by doing this with your sellers prior to going to market. You're gonna do a better job selling it. All right, uh, so we're not going to go through each one of these, uh, so, but if you, so when yes. you, so you um, have the seller 
uh, complete this before listing. I do. And then do you put the date? Or yes. I put oh, the and then date. you do an addendum. Mm -hmm. If I need to do an addendum, if nothing's changed. Uh, now, that being said, let's say I take a listing and it sits on the market for six months. I'll probably do an updated one. Um, I had one that sat on the market for several months. The seller wouldn't let me price it where I felt the comps indicated it should be priced. And we had really bad rain and he got a leak in the garage. And so we had to do a new set of these. And I went ahead and did it before um, it was necessary. I still did it while we were on the market. We eventually reduced and sold. Um, and I even got the buyer and represented them. So I was very happy that we took care of this. Um, yeah, so if it's more than about six months old, if anything's more than about six months old, I'd update it. On a condo, would the garage be not attached or how would it be? Uh, a condo, a garage can be attached or it can be a communal garage. Okay. If it's a communal garage, it's not part of the subject property, it's part of the common area. So we don't even check it out? Nope. Well, and then, so if nothing has changed, then you don't do an addendum. That's right. If nothing's changed, I don't do an addendum. Although, even if it was like six months old, especially it, in an instance like the one that was leaking that I just told you about, it was also the one that had that, that leak story I told you about. It was the same listing. So, because it was a complicated one, I went ahead and had him like review a, a first page and we updated the date. Okay. I asked him, had, uh, you know, we changed the information we needed to, adding that leak, and then we updated the date. Or um, even if nothing's changed, do you still like put it in denim like oh everything's? Still I probably would just uh, just so that the buyer feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. Just cover your bases, right? You're as an agent, you're not liable if you double check, right? So he could have uh, changed, and the seller, not being a real estate agent, doesn't realize that they need to tell you so that you can update this. So yes, I d I still would. There is here a central state condition, but usually the, in the condo there is a package. Where is that to go? A package? Mm -hmm. You mean CCNRs? Some sort of package. That's a, um, yeah, that's a condo disclosure package, HOA document package. Escrow usually orders that once you have a deal because they're costly. So um, we're not going to go over those today because that is specific to a singular condo complex and also because the seller doesn't complete them. The seller simply pays for them and they're ordered from the HOA president or the HOA management company. Mm -hmm. But as an agent, you need to make sure they get ordered. Escrow can sometimes be slow with them and you don't want escrow uh, delaying you to a point where the buyer gets those five additional days because they got delivered late, okay? All right, uh, moving on um, to just below all those check boxes, we have some lines here. The first one is exhaust fan or fans in, right? So most bathrooms have exhaust fans, sometimes the kitchen. Here you would write in wherever the seller has exhaust fans. Same thing, 220 volt wiring. Guess what, most of my sellers don't know what voltage of wiring they have. They can write unknown in here. Do not leave it blank, do not leave it blank. Fireplaces in, gas starter, roof type. Once again, if they don't know, they don't know. Just write that in there. It's okay for a seller not to know. What's not okay is for them to guess and be wrong. So when my sellers are on the fence about how to answer something, I always tell them, if you don't know, we say we don't know. Uh, you know, don't make conjecture. Conjecture is going to get you into a lot of trouble. You're liable for anything you put in here. But if we say we don't know, how can we be liable? However, if you know for a fact, we have to absolutely write it in here. Do you yes. know what the statute of limitations is if they go ahead with this and then the buyer buys and then you know they go back and they see that the seller crossed some things or wrote some things that were not necessarily the truth? Maybe he, the seller didn't mean it, but how long I think it's the like buyer... three or five years, but the only way it's enforceable is if the seller knowingly I see. Okay. put but falsified you... information on here or knowingly um, omitted something that they should have entered. So that's what Hard to prove. Yeah, you, so you have to to the best of your knowledge. You yes. cannot say more than what you That's know. right. Um, when that happens, most of the time, buyers find these things out from neighbors mm -hmm. who were aware of things that happened with the previous owner mm -hmm. in, the, in the neighborhood. So um, as, an, as a listing agent, you're going to get neighbors in the open house, usually, 
who want to talk your ear off and they will tell you the good, bad, and ugly of the property, I highly suggest you ask your seller about whatever it is those neighbors are telling you. Because are you responsible if the neighbor told you something and you didn't address it with the seller? You absolutely are. All right? Okay. I wouldn't go asking, though. <laughs> Um, I had a property on the market once that got broken into while my seller was present in the property. And damn it, every single neighbor that came in my open house talked about it. That's all they talked about. <laughs> That's all they talked about. And we did updated disclosures, including that info. All right. Um, okay, so <coughs> moving on. Um, are there, to the best of your seller's knowledge, any of the above that are not in operating condition? Yes or no? If yes, then describe, attach additional sheets if necessary. All right, so if you, on the next uh, few documents, if you guys answer yes to anything, even if it's a stupid question, no brainer, and I'll point a few of those out to you in a second, you need to write what you're saying yes about in this line. And if you need more space, you absolutely have to attach a document. You can attach a, a plain piece of paper that they write on, but I highly suggest having it typed out. Why? People's handwriting isn't always legible, and I have literally, as a buyer's agent, kicked documents back because I can't read them. Yes? Um, like you said, somebody broke to their house, like when you were listing their house? Someone okay. broke in the seller's house while it was listed, yes. And then you have to... Disclose it? Disclose. Absolutely. It, it can possibly affect desirability of the property. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because of the safety they have to... Anything that could possibly affect desirability. And uh, the way the law upholds that is common sense. Mm -hmm. Could it possibly bother someone that that home was broken into? Absolutely. So it should be disclosed. Yes. So say uh, you take a listing and you know, oh, you don't know, but they, your seller knows there was a house was broken like two houses down the, the street or something that was last a couple months or something like that. Should you disclose that? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus. Let the black and white answer from your teacher perspective. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you, may, you don't have black to know. Black and white that. answer, yes. But you don't but have they, to know that. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> black and white answer, yes. And that's all I'm saying here. Yeah. Yes, and better be safe than sorry. Right? So, I mean, you can be, I, and if I was going to disclose it, which I probably would in all honesty. I would probably be vague about it because it's hearsay, usually, second, third hand. And what I'd say is uh, there was a, a fairly recent break-in on the same block. Yeah. And I would leave it at that. I wouldn't provide details. You're not, you don't have a copy of the police report. People like to exaggerate stuff like that, so be careful what you disclose. Yeah. Vague and simple is better than wrong. Yes? Sorry that I asked that question. I have a listing. We'll Sorry. talk about that later. No, it's an intruder that it comes to this property. Okay, but we've got to do our disclosures. We can talk about your listing later. Um, and that specific issue. This is the longest and most intensive class that I teach. So I'm sorry if I'm short with you guys. We need to get through it, okay? All right. Um, okay. So for, you, I'm sorry, for yes, we need some extra additional. Information. Yes, you have to explain why. So right now, the question is just about the equipment and everything we've talked about here. There are sections for blanket for like blanket questions that say, is there anything that the seller is aware of that would affect desirability or value? So that's where you'd uh, include something like what we just discussed, the break-in, okay? Um, and I'll point that out when we get there. All right, so page two of the TDS, section B, are you the seller aware of any significant defects, malfunctions in any of the following? And you're going to notice, and you can explain to your sellers when you fill out this package, that a lot of the questions, they sort of overlap. So you may be saying yes and covering the same info in different sections of this document and other documents many times. The reason for that is that, uh, you know, we, we had to get very, very inclusive to make sure all bases were covered. All right, so are you the seller aware of any significant defects, malfunctions, and any of the following? And I tell my buyers and sellers, don't automatically just check yes or no. Let's read the next section before you check that. Um, interior walls, ceilings, floors, exterior walls, insulation, roofs, windows, doors, foundation, slabs. Your seller might not know what a slab is. It's a type of either a foundation 
or B, our document is not very specific, it could be literally translated to a slab of concrete that's poured in the backyard simply so patio furniture can sit on it and be nice and be stable, right? So, which one should you answer? Which one should your seller answer if they are aware of a slab? Both. It's not specific as to what type of slab, so be more inclusive versus less inclusive if there's an issue. Hopefully there's not an issue in either case for you and your client. All right, driveways, sidewalks, walls, fences, electrical systems, plumbing, sewers, septics, other structural components. All right, so then um, probably going through those check boxes, your seller is going to say uh, yes, no, yes, no, whatever they're going to say. And then you can go back up to the first part of section B and select yes or no. And if there is anything that you answer yes to or check, you're going to describe it to the best actual knowledge the seller has, right? So they might say, oh, uh, yes, um, I had a foundation, or I had a contractor out here that was running something, a wire under the house for me, and they said that there was a leaning post under the house, right? So what would I say there? There's a leaning post under the house? No. What I would say is I check the box for foundation and I would say in the description, seller was told by an electrical contractor there may be uh, a leaning post under the house. Maybe. And I'm going to describe that's an electrical contractor, right? That's all I know. I'm not going to say for sure there is because it wasn't a foundation person. I don't have a report. I'm going to make sure that I leave it factually objective as it was uh, disclosed to the seller by that unrelated person. Yes? If you have a report, you're supposed to attach it to all Yes. This, right? okay. And if I have a big fat report, like a foundation inspection, a nasty termite, that insurance claim, I would say, yes, water damage, past mold uh, issues, please see attached insurance claim. Um, and I would literally make it an attachment to this document. Yes? Is there an inspection referred to the installation of this uh, device? Uh, in this, uh, to this what? Uh, installation. Yep, yeah, there's a section for uh, improvements, installations, modifications. We'll talk about that soon. So, if you don't know, what do, what do you write? I don't know or not available? What, what should be good? Well, um, I don't know is okay. Not available is not an okay answer. Right? Because you might not have a report available, but they, there was a report. There was a report done that cannot be located. It was performed by blah, blah, blah company approximately April of 2016. But if you're a good listing agent, you're not gonna have them write that. You're gonna stop what you're doing and you're gonna get that company on the phone and you're gonna try to get a copy of that report. So instead of rephrasing whatever, you can actually get the report, say see attached and attach that actual report. Sometimes it's not possible, but if it's at all possible, you'll want to do that. Sometimes your sellers are going to offer up reports from when they made their purchase because their purchase was not that long ago. Should those reports be given to the new buyer? Yes. Yes. I don't go fishing for them. I don't ask about them when I do the disclosures with the sellers, but if they mention them, I have to get a copy if they still have it. Um, my understanding is that uh, you provide information within the last five years. Is, do you go beyond five years? No, anything that could materially affect the desirability or value of the property. And absolutely something, uh, you should disclose anything that they're aware of. It doesn't, okay, it doesn't so have to be in the last five years. Okay. Um, a specific <coughs> example is death in the property. Right. If there was a death in the property, you are required to disclose it for five years after the death. However, if it was a violent death or a suicide, and you don't disclose it because it's been 15 years, can the seller and, and the listing agent be liable 100% because it can definitely affect desirability and value. Absolutely. 15 years? 25 years, 100 years if they know about it. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not exaggerating here. So, you know, people in the neighborhood have lived there a long time, their grandparents told them stories, they know about it, you write it in here. In all honesty, I advise my sellers, even if it was a peaceable death and they know about it, go ahead and put it in here. Most people aren't going to have an issue with the notation that eight years ago, a woman died from old age at home. They're not going to. But they might have an issue if you don't disclose it. Right? Some people do have that issue yeah. with it. Yeah. Significant.
but they're, if they find out about that and they didn't get the opportunity to know and you guys know and didn't tell them, even if it wasn't the last five years, I mean, there's a point of contention there. And if they find out during escrow, maybe it's a cancellation of escrow. Let's avoid that. Yes? A significant effect. You know, who, how you decide if it's significant, not significant, how do you respond to that? Uh, I mean, that's a hard question to answer, but let's use some common sense. So, like, seeing a little crack in one wall, probably not an issue. Seeing a crack that goes from one side of the room to the other. Crack in, in the right driveway. So you have yeah, no, that. that's all minor. That stuff can go on the AVID, the Agent Visual Inspection Disclosure, also in this package. If we have enough time, we'll go, go through that. Okay. Um, yes? I think they, they changed the law. They just say, you know, it's three years now. Oh, is it three? And, and also, it's important to know, this is West Hollywood, if you have AIDS, if it was intended because of AIDS, you don't, uh, you, don't that, you don't disclose any that. illness. No, yeah, that is a violation of privacy. Anyone's medical status in relation to disease is not to be disclosed. So if they want additional details about something like a death on the property, that is from a disease, um, you'll have to probably pick up the phone and call the other agent and explain that that is uh, legally protected info, but that it was not a violent death or suicide is probably the language we use. All right? Um, so yeah, three years, but guys, it doesn't matter. You know about it, just close it, okay? Okay. Um, let's see here. So the next section is installation of a listed appliance, device, or amenity is not a precondition of sale or transfer of the dwelling. The carbon monoxide device, garage door opener, or child resistant pool barrier may not be in compliance with safety standards relating to respectively. And I'm not gonna go further into this, but what this whole section here means is that even if things are legally required by building and safety, other safety regulations, California law, it's not a condition of the sale, right? It doesn't mean that the seller automatically has to do it for the buyer. Is it negotiable? 100%. But it is not a condition. It is not required. The buyer can always ask for it based on what they find during their inspections and through disclosures. But that's what that section is about. This section really helps me, especially with first-time buyers, when they're asking for every little tiny thing. Um, you know, they might get an inspector who says, oh, uh, the fire rating on you know, this, um, this facade, it was in compliance and it's grandfathered in at the time, um, but you, know, you should probably have this type of glass installed. So you know, my buyers automatically ask for it. And I pull up the section here, we read it together, usually ahead of time because I like to review the disclosures if I have them before we do inspections. And I kind of set them up for the fact that if you're not buying new construction, most homes are going to have stuff that's not, in, uh, not, not up to date for code and compliance. As long as it was at the time, it's totally fine, it's grandfathered in. If you'd like to upgrade it at your own election, you're welcome to do so. The inspection is so you have information on it. We typically are asking for repairs or credits in relation to safety issues that were unknown to us, but we shouldn't be asking for upgrades. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it helps me, and it will probably help you. If you set yourself up, your buyers up, before you do your inspections with this paragraph here and that information, it will help you during your negotiations through inspections. All right, moving on. C, um, are you the seller aware of any of the following? Okay, so I'm not going to read through each one of these, but I'm going to point out a couple of them to you. All right. Um, section 2, C2. It's talking about shared um, like fences, driveways. Sometimes the sellers won't think about it. A lot of times there is a shared driveway. Um, if they know for a fact it's shared, it should be disclosed here. If they don't, my answer would be no. They don't know about it, okay? So unless they know for sure, and they can say that they've checked it out with title or a surveyor or um, the owner, even if the uh, like next door neighbor or previous owner told them something, um, that should be disclosed on here, right? But I would say that, uh, yes, the fence on the west uh, property perimeter line is shared with the... The previous owner told me that the uh, fence on the west um, property line um, is shared with the next door neighbor, okay? Say where it's coming from. That way, if it's wrong, 
you know, they're, they are doing their duty to disclose, but they're not liable for disclosing what the owner may have erroneously told them or the neighbor who wanted them to pay for half of the fence <laughs> erroneously told them so that they would pay for half of the fence. All right? Um, let's see. Uh, very similar with number three. Uh, we're not really going to go into that. That's a more advanced issue. Um, you hear the word encroachment or easement uttered by your seller that knows about one, go and see someone who knows a lot about real estate, okay? Um, title, also. Uh, four, room additions, structural modifications, other alterations or repairs made without necessary permits. You're only discussing ones made without necessary permits here, okay? Um, five, not in compliance with building codes for the same things, okay? Um, God, you probably don't want to list a property that has these issues, but you may have to at some point. Um, a lot of them may be like a teardown or something. It's going to be a developer sale. Um, good luck. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, same thing with 10 zoning violations. This is an advanced issue. You're going to want to talk to title and broker of record or someone. Um, here who is familiar and can advise you well. All right, 11, neighborhood noise problems or other nuisances. Better to be safe than sorry. If someone's got a rowdy neighbor that they've called the police on the, you know, three times in the last year, should that go on here? Yes. Yeah. Would I talk about how severe the problem is? No, I it's qual that's qualitative. What I would say is we've had issues with excessive noise from the neighbors to the north side of the property, all right? Uh, if there's a freeway close by or major streets or an airport nearby, I would probably suggest to my sellers they think about those things and we notate something like that. Um, when in doubt, uh, I had one that was sort of in doubt. They were sort of close to the freeway. They're like, oh, we don't really hear it anymore, but <coughs> we definitely remember hearing it when we bought the property. <coughs> Say, you know, there's a freeway nearby, normal city traffic noise, something like that. All right, 12, CCNRs or other deed restrictions or obligations. If it is a planned unit development with a gate, if there is any kind of HOA, 100% this question is a yes. And this is one of those no-brainer answers I told you about, where you're going to say yes, and because it's such a no-brainer, they might forget, you might forget to actually write that in the section below for the description. So if you're checking yes for number 12, you're going to say yes, I would usually, I usually notate it by putting an item number 12 in here, like a little numeric and 12. And I'd say property is an HOA and has CCNRs. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, same thing with number 13 and 14. All these are going to be yes if it's a condo. Um, 15, if uh, abatements or citations, this is once again an advanced thing. Go see someone if the answer to this question is yes. 16, any lawsuits by or against the seller threatening to or affecting this, this real property claims for damages by the seller threatening to or affecting this property claim, claims for breach of uh, an enhanced protection agreement threatening to or affecting this property, any lawsuits or claims for damages alleging a defect or deficiency in this property or common areas. This means, um, okay, so any legal trouble, your seller's got to disclose it. That includes personal. So maybe they're going through a divorce and the uh, title to the property, the ownership of the property is at dispute. Even if it's 100% unfounded, if there is a case filed or notice of pending case filed, your client needs to disclose it here. Sometimes an HOA will get together and they will sue the contractor who built their building because they find a major structural defect or something else like that. And whether they win or lose, uh, they need to disclose that. Lenders oftentimes may have an issue with this because the legal fees representing the HOA could become quite costly. Um, and so that could affect um, you know, the value of the property also, the outcome, okay? All right, um, so this next section, the uh, if the answer to any of these is yes, explain. So make sure you explain clearly, thoroughly that it's legible and that you itemize it. So if I had um, yeses in two, seven, and nine, then I'm going to explain two, seven, and nine here. All right, section D1, seller certifies that the property as of the close of escrow will be in compliance 
with Section 13113.8 of the Health and Safety Code by having operable smoke detectors, which are approved, listed, and installed in accordance with the state fire marshal's regulations and applicable local standards. Most of our cities here require retrofitting and certification of such. Okay? So this is going to be taken care of if there is a retrofitting certificate. It's also referred to as a certificate of compliance. The listing agent initiates this inspection. And if there's work to be done, the work is done, and that same inspector comes out and signs off on this document. They provide it to escrow. Escrow provides it to the buyer. Just double check yourself and get it over to the buyer's agent yourself directly anyhow. Um, but I explain it to my buyers that don't worry, even if we're not in compliance now during our inspections or they say no, it's not in compliance, it will be handled. All right, make sure it's handled, but um, you can explain it in relation to the retrofit. If it's not a city that requires retrofitting by the city, there is also state law that requires more basic things like smoke detector, carbon monoxide, uh, water heater strapping. If you're ever in doubt and it's a city that doesn't require certification of retrofitting, call a retrofit company. They'll give you the California state code that says what needs to be done, and they'll also give you a list of the cities that require what. If they don't, they'll tell you. They'd love to have your business on the next one that does, okay? Escrow is also a great resource because they get all these documents. They usually have a pretty good idea of whether or not a city requires it, but uh, I'd go straight to the horse's mouth, the retrofitting company. Because they'll tell you, yes, if it does, they definitely want your money, or the seller's money. Sorry, I have a question. Retrofitting, you ask for the buyer side to make sure? I'm confused by your question. So, like, when should I call the retrofitting in, in case that you have a doubt? Or this, uh, so the seller is required by law in our state to do certain things, but in the city of LA, they have even more restrictive requirements. Um, if you're the buyer's agent, uh, especially during inspections or during the appraisal, anything's pointed out, you're going to ask the seller if they have the retrofitting inspection. And if they do great, when are you gonna do the work? You might find that the appraiser wants the work done before they'll sign off on the appraisal, which means you're they're going to get it done real quick because you need that appraisal much faster than the prior close. If that's not the case, in all honesty, as a listing agent, I usually wait until the buyer signs off on contingencies to have that work done. If I have the inspection early and it's really minor stuff like one smoke detector, um, I just tell them to do it. You have to ask your seller for permission for that, but um, I think there's a there's a higher fee if they have to come back out after they do, they do the inspection and then do the work and then do the certification. So if it's minor, I usually call my seller and say, hey, they're here, can, um, it's minor, can we just do the work now? It, it will end up costing you less money. And most sellers want to save some money, so the answer is yes, since it has to be legally done anyhow prior to any successful close of sale. Okay, does that answer your question? Thank okay, you so you're welcome. All right, um, section two. Same thing, this is about the water heater strapping. It, all of that pertains to exactly what we just discussed as part of the retrofitting, and it's also part of the California state requirements. Um, all right, page three of the TDS. Here's where the seller signs and dates. Section three, III, agent's inspection disclosure. Some real estate agents will do their AVID at the same time and attach it to this document. I usually don't. Maybe I should. I hate doing my AVID. I do it during the buyer inspections usually, if I have enough time. So your AVID as the listing agent is literally considered a seller disclosure. So if you deliver your AVID as the listing agent after the seller inspection disclosure contingency has expired and I've lifted it and I get it, someone like me is going to use it against you if they need to. Okay, so do your AVID. I hate doing it, but Knowing that always gets me doing, you know, to do it before uh, um, I need to. And that AVID is in here. We'll talk more about that soon. Okay? You guys stop me when it's time to move cars, all right? Because I'm not paying attention. Can you stay? Uh, Two fifteen, okay? Or do you guys need to go now? No. Oh, later. Later. Okay. Two fifteen. We'll break for fifteen minutes. Um, and, and then this class, sorry guys, is so long that I'm just gonna start whether or not everyone's back. Um, all right, uh, okay, so um, I don't usually check that box because my AVID's not usually done, 
Um, I never check a box too because, oh my God, even on new construction, there's a scratch somewhere. Not number two, the second box. Agent notes no items for disclosure. Do you see that? You are legally required to provide an AVID. So, you can't check box number two. Don't do it. Even if you have nothing to disclose or note, you literally write that on the agent uh, visual inspection disclosure document. All right, number three, agent notes, notes the following items. Don't you dare, don't list it here, you're gonna list it on the AVID form. Also included in this package, we'll dis uh, discuss later, yes? And then just here it says, I mean, on the top it says C attached AVID, and then in the notes, will you also write that as well? No, 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 what I was saying is I don't usually have my AVID done, okay. so I don't usually check this box. Okay. If you have it done, you can, but I mean, it's gonna get signed off on anyhow. It's a separate required document, so even if you have it at that time and you don't check uh, check this box, it's fine as long as you deliver it within the required time frame. All right, so you're going to sign it, um, and then everybody else is going to sign it. That's basically the end of it, but look at the very bottom. It says, section 1102.3 of the Civil Code provides a buyer with the right to rescind a purchase contract for at least three days after the delivery of this disclosure. If delivery occurs within, sorry, uh, if the delivery occurs after the signing of an offer to purchase. If you wish to rescind the contract, you must act within the prescribed period. So, I told you it's five days from delivery. That is still true. You still have five days, okay? But, let's say what you failed to disclose on here or amended on here was actually like a correction to something that was already known. Maybe you forgot to write in uh, that section where I said, oh yes, it's in an HOA, okay? Normally, stuff like that that's logical, let's say the buyer tried to cancel and used that excuse, it would go to court and the judge would have some leeway to go ahead and maybe side with the seller because it wasn't new information that was disclosed, right? But that's not the case with anything on this document. This document is so important that it doesn't matter what it is, even that checkbox where it says seller is or is not currently occupying the property, that they can get out of it. Which is why I said double check, do this document with your client. It is so important. The buyer has a get out of jail free card and who's the seller going to be mad at? You, right? Also, as the buyer's agent and you need a jail, get out of jail free card, you know where to look now. All right? Now, the next document, also very important, seller property questionnaire. However, it is much simpler questions and or ridiculous questions and you can have some fun with it and a lot of them are the same questions covering the same info so uh, we're going to start down um, we're just going to read section B uh, seller awareness for each statement below answer the question are you seller aware of by checking either yes or no explain any yes answers um, in the space provided or attach additional comments and check section VI so there's a section if you're going to attach anything to this document that you have to check and say see attached. Once again, very, very important, all of the crossed T's and dotted I's on, on these documents. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with B, A, one. Within the last three years, the death of the occupant on the property. Thank you, yes, it's three. So, um, you'd say yes or no. However, if it was five years ago and you still think it should be disclosed, if it was 100 years ago and it's violent and you still think it should be disclosed, would you check yes? No, you would not, however, there is a section elsewhere in this document where it uh, allows you to plainly state anything you think should be disclosed, okay? All right, um, A2, uh, this is the one I have fun with my sellers. I ask them, hey, you guys been breaking any bad up in this? Do you have any meth labs in the house? How about in the garage? And we get a big laugh and we check no. I mean, good, good Lord, I hope we check no. Uh, if we check yes, I don't think it can legally be sold. <laughs> but I'm not positive about that. If you check yes, I guarantee you that the buyer's uh, going to at least uh, put the sale on hold, um, <laughs> if not cancel. And I'm pretty sure no lender on earth is going to uh, go ahead and lend on that property. All right. Um, same thing with three kind of ridiculous question. Illegal controlled substance released on or beneath the property. Um, four. Most likely your client's not going to know the answer to this, even if it's a yes. Is it uh, located in or adjacent to an industrial use zone? All right, if you're not aware, your answer is no. Um, let's see. 
that would include like airport, right? So it, I, I wouldn't have known before I worked in real estate that airport was industrial. I mean, I guess it's common sense now that I've been in the business, but it wouldn't have been to me when I first started. Um, whether the property is located within one mile of a former federal or state ordinance location. You think your seller is going to know the answer to that? Probably not. It's okay to say no because they don't know. This is to the best of their knowledge. Um, six, whether the prop, uh, sorry, seven, uh, whether the property is a condominium or located in a planned unit development or other common interest subdivision. If the answer is yes, it's yes, and make sure in the section for explanation down below, you say that property is a condo and there is an HOA. Uh, eight, insurance claims affecting the property within the past five years. So that flooding situation I was telling you about with my listing, I had to say yes. And I said, number eight, there was an insurance claim in relation to water damage and mold as previously disclosed. Please see attached. And I attached the whole fat package from the insurance company. And I just kept on throughout my disclosure process saying that same thing. Um, in a condominium too? If it's a oh yeah, especially in a condominium. Uh, condos, because they're stacked on top of each other, uh, the most common disclosure I see in disclosures for uh, the you know multi-level complexes is mm -hmm. leaking from one unit into the other. Mm -hmm. And the liability for that uh, is going to be based upon what's contained in the HOA documents. I've had management companies try to hold a client, a, a past client of mine, liable for. Um, leak into the unit below. Well, um, she wasn't liable per the HOA documents. She tried to say, well, it's an exclusive use pipe. Well, that is typically the case with HOA rules, but it didn't happen to be in this instance. I think I'm the only person on earth that reads HOA documents word for word. And I was like, really? Are you going to tell me that page 32 of the uh, rules and regulations and page 19 of your CCNRs that stipulate that all pipes are common property and that the building is liable for any damages or repairs caused thereof? Are you going to tell me that my that there's an amendment that we didn't receive during the course of escrow when you provided me HOA documents? Or are you mistaken? Is it truly the building's responsibility? She's like, I'll pay the bill, thank you. <laughs> so read those documents. Um, all right, let's see. Matters affecting title of the property. Most likely your seller is not gonna know about this, but let's say uh, a previous owner died and the seller didn't, that co-owned in some form. Um, didn't file the necessary paperwork to have title transferred over to their name. And let's say you, as a listing agent, weren't aware of this until you entered escrow. You're going to have to answer yes here. I would get your title rep involved to help you explain the situation. It's not a big deal, but it does take time and documents need to be completed, notarized, and recorded. All right? So that may adjust your escrow period. Um, in any case, uh, if you hear anything like that story, um, since it's going to be a delicate issue possibly with your seller, like uh, the same story I'm telling you about with the leaking roof and the flood from the second level. Um, his wife had passed away. I told you she had been ill. Um, I didn't ask him if he filed the paperwork. I called up my title rep after I met with him and I asked how title was held and explained that there had been a recent death of his wife and wanted to find out if there was anything we needed to do to legally sell. And if that was the case, I would have involved him to get the documentation ready and take care of it prior to going to the market, if I could have. And it would have made it a lot less personal, I'm sure. If, um, and I, avoid, I would have avoided any like painful moments with my client. Okay? Um, so that would be like the most common one I would think of. Most of the other time, you're probably not going to be able to sell the property if there are issues with title. 10, material facts or defects affecting the property not otherwise disclosed to the buyer. Number 10, here's your blanket statement. Anything that would affect the property, material factor defect affecting the property, not otherwise disclosed to the buyer. This is, material fact is absolutely known, proven, substantiated fact, not hearsay, okay? Mm -hmm. Defects, that's any problem, basically. Uh, all right, 
Uh, number 11, plumbing fixtures on the property that are non-compliant plumbing fixtures as defined by Civil Code Section 1101.3. Well, guys, that has to do with um, the same retrofitting and state compliance stuff, but I don't know that code by heart. I don't know what it says in relation to that stuff. I'm guessing unless your seller is a plumber, they probably don't either. So even if there are non-compliant plumbing fixtures, your seller probably doesn't know about it. Right, mm -hmm. and how would they know if, if they have a, a, if they have the inclination that something might not uh, might not be compliant? They still probably don't know what the civil code section says. So it's just asking about non-compliance in relation to a civil code that no one really knows <coughs> anything about. So I don't think I've ever had a yes answer to this question. Mm -hmm. All right, page two, repairs and alterations. Oh, we are two fifteen, so we're going to take a break. All right, see you guys in fifteen minutes.